Well, we would like to continue talking about women, women in sport, women in business, but our focus at this point is women in sport. And with us is Ms. Shari John, the founder of the Caribbean Women Entertainment Sport Network. And that was an organization which was designed to inspire. Yes, it was. Um, the CWS and Caribbean Women and Entertainment Sport Network was created in 2012 to shed some light on women in sport. Because while I was at The Guardian, I found that even working at The Guardian, there was very little space for women's sport. So I, st I started the company using the tools that I had, which was simply social media and a website at the time to promote women in sport. So you founded the organization. How difficult was it for you to actually start it being a woman? Uh, it was tremendously difficult. Um, I think I still continue to struggle in, in starting to develop it. I put it down for a while to finish my degree in sports management, and I'm just starting to, to bring it back. But I feel that, you know, as Gabby just said, everything is a struggle when you're trying to create social change. So it is difficult, but I continue to persist and see, you know, how can, how can I keep it moving? And not just here in Trinidad and Tobago, you talk about Caribbean. Yes, uh, it is a Caribbean company. Um, I try to focus on women in the Caribbean as a whole uh, because I think it's important. The, the Caribbean, by extension, has the same sort of culture that Trinidad has where women in sport and gender equality is concerned. So I like to promote it in the entire region and not just in Trinidad. When I spoke with Cleopatra Barrel, she said that sports people in general in Trinidad and Tobago aren't really given the recognition that they deserve. Do you share that view? Oh, that's entirely true. I think that we still have this recreational approach to sport and we don't see it as a profession, as a business. And I think that that tends to cripple us in terms of developing our sport as a business, not just women's sport, but men's sport as well. And that comes down, I think, particularly where women, women are concerned. It's exactly what um, Dr. Hussain was speaking about, that you tend to focus on the ones, the women who are doing well, but at the same time, you also have to develop the women who are not doing well to help ensure that they do do well, because the ones who do do well, they struggle to get where they are, but we need to be helping the ones who are not doing well and providing support for them. And that is exactly what CWSN is about. So how do we help them? I would say that first you have to understand the issues. Uh, what we tend to do a lot is have a blanket approach to women in sport. And a lot of the people who are proposing um, things to help women in sport, they don't really understand the issue. They don't understand the so socio-psychological issues that affect women in sport. They don't understand the historical um, factors that affect why we are where we are today and how we develop and how there's this conception, this perception that women are not interested in sport, but yet we find around the world where people actually invest in women's sports programs, they get a lot of turnout both as supporters and athletes. So it's not actually true. And I was able to visit the CWSCF website this morning and I saw a lot of articles about women's sports, especially cricket. I, I saw a lot of articles about the West Indies women, Australian women and, and, and different athletes uh, in, in different sports as well. But how do you go about executing a plan that you have? In terms of? Actually getting the message out there for young women to get involved in sport if they want to and not feel as though that they need to be pushed in one direction. You know, there is always this traditional mentality that, you know, sports is for men. Yes, that is very true. And again, it comes back to education. So some of the things that CWESN, um, and I also created another company which is a foundation to help educate women and, and everybody else as a matter of fact and women in sport. Um, it comes down to education. One of, one of the things that we want to do, uh, have conferences that speak about um, women in sport, the issues that relate to the media and how the media affects the perception of women in sport. Uh, we're going to do school tours that help educate gr young girls on the issues that affect women in sport because you find that people tend to think that this is a men thing, that men don't give the, the woman that, the recognition that they deserve. But you'd find that the same way men are conditioned to believe certain things, women are also conditioned to believe certain things. And even as female athletes, you also find that they don't even understand a lot of the issues that affect women in sport. And because you don't understand the, the issues, 
you can't fix it, you can't address it, because how do you highlight what you don't know? So you would have, over the years, spoken to a lot of women in sport. I, I just want to read this that I pulled off the website, um, based on what the company, your organization, wants to do. It says, in a society which constantly tells us that we are not enough, that our bodies are not strong enough, that our minds and that our minds are not capable of conceiving and creating athletic greatness. We see stories that defy these narratives every day, and CWESN's goal is to find them and tell them. Yes. So one of the focuses that, I, I, that I've shifted to um, this year is telling the stories of women in sport. I always like to tell people that when a guy is trying to get to the top of his um, sporting whatever, he has to play against his opponent. You know, he has to beat his opponent. He has to figure out what are the weaknesses of my opponent? How do I get better? When a woman has to get to the top of her sporting career, she has so many different things in society to fight against. She has to fight against how people perceive her, whether or not she has too much muscles. Um, she has to fight against uh, stereotypes that says that she shouldn't be in sport. The fact that there are not many avenues for the professionalization of women's sport. At some point in time, she has to ask herself, do I go down this road or do I go back to school? And a lot of guys face that, but for women, it's a lot more severe. You know, there are way less avenues and it's a way larger risk to go down the rule of being a professional sport, a professional athlete. So she has to fight against so much other things. When do I, do I get married now? Do I have a child now? When I have a child, can I continue? It's so much more for a woman. She does, it's more than just competing against your opponent. So, and these stories, I feel, need to be told. And if you don't tell these stories, uh, we know about Dwayne Bravo's stories, about, about um, Richard Thompson's story, where they come from. But how many of our female athletes' stories do you know? You know, I'm a huge fan of a lot of these women. I follow their career. But even I can't say that I know where they come from, what their struggles were like, who they're... Uh, who their heroes were, I don't know, you know, and they have stories that can inspire a lot of people, but nobody's telling them. Where is it going wrong, though, for us not to recognize what they've done, especially the female athletes, and, and try to give them the recognition that they deserve? Again, it always starts at education and understanding the issues. When, for instance, when you look at what the president of the CWI said the other day that the, one of the issues with um, the development of cricket in Jamaica is the fact that you have too many uh, female PE teachers. And people, people address that issue as, as an issue with PE teachers being competent or incompetent, but that is actually not the issue. The issue is that you have this idea that because I'm a woman, Cricket is too complicated for me to understand, and that's highly sexist, and nobody saw it from that perspective, and I was appalled at that. I, you know, I scoured the newspapers for like a week trying to find somebody who actually addressed it from that perspective, and nobody did. Everybody was always, well, our PE teachers are qualified, but it's sexist, and, it, and it's really disheartening that you'd find that the president of the CWI, who is in charge of an international women's team, thinks like that, because when somebody at the top thinks like that, um, it really says it will have an impact on how much resources and how much attention and stuff that you give to women to, to your women's team. So that was this really disheartening. I, I can tell you that I had a there was a female PE teacher at Gasparov Composite School when I went, Miss Lee. So you know I and and she was always so welcoming as well. You know sometimes you may need a, a different perspective, and I think women in sports can do that as well. They serve as motivation, as you mentioned, for young girls as well. If you are to see a young girl who wants to get in sport, what would you say to her? I would say to value yourself. Because I think what this world does is it tells women who are athletes that we don't have the same value that men have. So I would say to value yourself and understand that you are with something despite the fact that this culture that we live in it might tell you that because you're a female athlete, you're not good enough. And, it, and they do that in, in very subtle ways. They do that in ways like a simple thing like there's the, there's the women, there's the World Cup, for instance, and then there's the Women's World Cup. So it says that the World Cup with the men are the established, is the established event, and then there's the Women's World Cup. 
And one of the, something I saw that Australia did the other day, they used to call their women's team the Southern Stars, and they changed it to simply the Australian women's cricket team. And now they'd also call the men the Australian men's cricket team. So they try to address that. And it's simple things like that that we have to do to change this idea that there's men and then the women are the side piece. All right, well, thank you very much, Ms. Shari John, the founder of the Caribbean Women's Sports and Education Foundation, for coming in and telling us what your organization is doing to empower females, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the Caribbean as well.